Welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a joy and a privilege to welcome you to worship on uh, Zoom or YouTube or via audio or however you are joining us this morning. Uh, today is the sixth Sunday of Easter, and I'm Rachel Dietz, the pastor of St. John Lutheran Church. And we begin with confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Christ is Alive, Let Christians Sing. Uh, if you are joining us from home, uh, it's the green hymnal. 363 and the Cranberry Hymnal 389. So Christ is alive, let Christians sing uh, 389 and 363. <laughs> Till earth and sky, I will shine. 
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So if you are a young person, you probably know this, perhaps even better than your mom and dad, that sometimes technology doesn't work the way that you'd like it to. And that's exactly what happened this morning. Uh, we had some malfunctioning with Zoom, and so we uh, canceled the meeting for worship, and this is being recorded uh, to be put up on YouTube as if uh, we all were still together. So will you have a good laugh with me? Uh, a great big belly laugh on the count of three that sometimes uh, technology uh, gets a little wonky. Are you ready? One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> now, doesn't that feel better? We feel better sometimes in the middle of uncertain times when we have a good laugh at things, especially things that we can't control. We can't get mad and we can get angry. And, you know, if, if Pastor wanted to, she could get mad at her laptop and throw it across the room. But then what would happen? Maybe my laptop would break. And I'd have even a bigger problem. So instead, we, sometimes we can decide to laugh at things and say, eh, there's nothing that we can do. And the very act of laughing, of getting extra oxygen in our bellies, of releasing all the feel-good chemicals that are in our heads and our guts, that can make us feel a little bit better. So I'm glad you're here today, and I'm glad that you're watching this. And would you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that we can laugh when things don't always go our way. Be with us today and every day. Keep our friends and family safe. And we can't wait to be back together again. In your name we pray. Amen. Our first reading today is from the 17th chapter of Acts. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What you, what therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, the one who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made with human hands. 
nor is God served by human hands as though needing him anything, since the very God gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, God made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times for their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for and find God though indeed God is not far from each one of us. For in God we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we too are the offspring of God. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now God commands all people everywhere to repent, because God has fixed a day on which to judge the world in righteousness by a man whom God has appointed. And of this God has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson this morning is John 14, 15 to 21. John 14, 15 to 21. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, who will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, whom the world neither sees nor knows. You know this spirit because the spirit abides with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are they who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. When I was young, I was absolutely enamored by the Tour de France. The long three-week bicycle race that went up and down throughout the country of France and the bicyclists would go by with incredible speed and the crowds of people would be there along the sides of the road cheering them. But as interesting as I found them, the people that I was most curious about were those people in the trucks that trailed them. I wondered, who are they and what are they doing? I wondered about their lives and what sort of person would choose to ride along a group of bicyclists in a truck rather than being one of the bicyclists themselves. The same thing can be seen and said for the people at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Sure, the people that have the floats and who march in the marching band, well, they're really interesting. 
but what about those people that walk alongside them? They're not spectators cheering and super excited. Uh, they may not even get a bit of candy out of it, but they are the people who are there uh, walking and walking and walking. In other words, who is that mad masked fellow? In today's gospel lesson, Jesus tells us about another advocate. Someone else to walk alongside. Someone else that can speak words of encouragement. It's interesting that Jesus doesn't say, I'm going to send you an advocate. He says, I'm going to send you another one. So if Jesus has already been our advocate, the one who's walking alongside, the one who's calling out, the one who is accompanying us, how wonderful then that he promises us that he is sending another one. Like the people in the trucks traveling behind the Tour de France, or the walkers in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, or maybe even the Moton Halloween Parade, or the Memorial Day Parade, which would be coming up that we're gonna postpone for a year. Those people who walk alongside, um, who encourage, who cheer on, who clear the way for obstacles that we would never see, who perhaps provide a bicycle tire or an extra thing of Gatorade or some fuel. Jesus also says today that he will not leave us orphaned. And in these days when we're trying to figure stuff out, when we're trying to wonder what in the world to do next, it can kind of feel a little bit like we might be orphaned. We're looking for such things as direction, protection, and order. And in some arenas, they appear to be lacking. But Jesus promises us that we are not alone. That we have one another to walk alongside with us. That God doesn't abandon us that we are not left to our own devices. So how have you seen advocates in the past couple of months? How have you seen people that have provided for us, who have spoken out uh, when it feels like our voices aren't heard? Where have you seen cheerleaders, encouragers, and people along the way to say, keep going, you can do this a little while longer. And the promise of God. So no, God is with you. And if we were together today in Zoom, that would be the conversation that we'd be having at the end of worship. When have you felt orphaned? When have you felt alone? And who was there for you along the way? So for the gift of technology that is allowing us to record this, for perhaps our desire to be the one in the truck rather than on the speedy bicycle, for those that often get lost in the shadows and for this community of faith, we say together, thanks be to God.
announcements this morning. Uh, thank you all very much for your continued and faithful offering. Um, because of your generosity, we have been able uh, to continue proclaiming the good news of Jesus. Today, we're also thankful for uh, Mitchell, who has joined us for tech support, uh, to begin to learn uh, how to move uh, microphones and video cameras around. In our prayers today, we also remember uh, Wynne Thomas, whose cancer has returned, along with Christian Ponska. Uh, some of you may know that Christian works as a ICU nurse at, at Reading Hospital, and he has tested positive uh, for COVID. So he is rehabilitating at home, and as far as I know, as of now, um, he has some aches and pains, um, but nothing more serious than that. I have been assured that his, uh, that his folks continually drop off food at his place. Uh, and if you would like to send him uh, a thank you note or a get well card, his address is 130 Madison Street, Shillington, 19607. Also, for those of you who are interested in participating uh, to honor our graduates, Maddie Klein and Jack Jacobs, we encourage you to shoot a short video for each of them between 30 seconds and a minute, perhaps sharing some words of advice or a favorite scripture verse you might have or a favorite memory you have of them. Both Maddie and Jack are graduating from Mifflin in a few short weeks. For our prayers this morning, uh, the response is, Oh God, hear us. Gathered together in our homes and praying together as the body of Christ, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Righteous God, instill in all leaders of the nations a desire for justice and the will to serve the oppressed. We pray especially for those nations in which their government threatens the population. Guide our nation's governors and their difficult pathway between the threat of disease and the dangers of scarcity and isolation. Bring our legislatures into agreement on how to assist those in need. Give us patience in facing our current predicament. For this we pray, O oh God, hear us. Compassionate God, visit all who are in great need, those who suffer from the coronavirus, especially Christian and Barbara, those living in loneliness and fear, those without jobs, and those who mourn their dead. Uphold those whose futures have been taken away from them. We pray for healthcare workers, for the residents in care homes, prisons, and refugee camps. For the countless persons who carry heavy burdens on their back, we pray. And we call out to you these names. Today, we remember before you, especially our homebound and shut-in, Shirley, Betty, Hilda, Joan, Carol, Fern, Fern, Dell, and Nancy. We remember those who are recovering from illness. Sandy, Nancy, Wynne, and Mark. For this we pray. O oh God, hear us. 
O oh God, embrace all orphans. Strengthen the agencies that attend to them. Shield orphan children from traffickers. Watch over all children whose, u- whose usual caregivers are absent. Form us into your children who love all whom you have made. For this we pray, O oh God, hear us. Gracious God, we pray for our church council as they meet this evening, for men's fellowship, for all our ministries as they adjust to a new virtual environment. For this we pray, O God, hear us. With bold confidence in your love, merciful God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We now sing, we now sing the Lord's Prayer. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You will see in the back of me the sign that says Alleluia. And we're almost to the end of our Easter season, and I would love to have additional art for the altar. And so if you're a young person and would like to draw a poster that we can put on the altar for the season of Pentecost, uh, the season of the Holy Spirit, uh, please uh, draw something. And I would love um, to have it be uh, art in our chancel. This Zoom meeting has uh, a less... Uh, just a few minutes left, uh, and so rather than sing our final hymn, we will sing one verse. So our first verse of love divine, all loves excelling, the first verse of love divine, all loves excelling, it's in our green hymnal, hymn number 315. Hymn number 315, we're going to sing the first verse. Oh, 
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Be the church deployed. Thanks be to God.